UFOs, unidentified scientific objects, have been one of the great scientific bugaboos of the last decade. Say you've seen one and you're ridiculed, or at least that's the way it used to be. Nowadays, while there are still plenty of scoffers and jeerers, uh, you're more likely to be listened to, and an increasing amount of scientific investigation is being conducted. In Australia at the moment is Professor James MacDonald, Professor of Meteorology at the University of Arizona. Officially, he was working for the US Navy, but in his spare time, he's checking many Australian reports of UFOs and comparing them with American reports. His aim is to see if the reports tally, in short, whether UFOs constitute a global phenomenon. Phenomenon. In Melbourne, he's talking with Brian King. Professor MacDonald, what have you found here that's been of use to you? I've uh, investigated uh, about uh, 50 or 60 cases uh, since I came down to uh, New Zealand and Australia. Extremely interesting UFO sightings. Uh, a lot of help from uh, local investigatory groups in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, and uh, have found, as I uh, go through these, that the type of sightings are essentially similar to those in the United States. What are the main similarities? Persons of uh, really quite high credibility reporting unconventional objects, discs, cigar-shaped objects, frequently at very low elevation, hovering uh, over sometimes urban areas, sometimes over cars, following cars. Same kind of uh, public reaction, uh, quite, a, quite a strong similarity to the American uh, reluctance to report them to official channels because of fear of ridicule. But uh, behind it all, a very large number, a, a, a very surprisingly large number of these uh, sightings of quite uh, uh, unconventional uh, objects maneuvering in our airspace. You have been highly critical of your own government's attitude towards UFOs. Indeed, indeed I have, yes. The, uh, I've taken a very good look at the American official investigation program, Project Blue Book, run by the Air Force, and I have uh, uh, quite unequivocally described it to scientific colleagues back in the States as superficial and incompetent. Why has the government taken this attitude, in your opinion? It's uh, not, a, not a brief story, but it goes back to 1953 when a CIA-involved investigation was held. Uh, as a result of the extremely heavy wave of sightings in 1952, the CIA and Air Force became so concerned over the sheer number of uh, uh, reports that were tying up Air American intelligence channels that they wanted to get this signal out of the system asked the Air Force, the CIA asked the Air Force for a, a debunking policy. The literal wording was to debunk the flying saucers, to decrease public interest in the UFOs. Uh, regulations were promulgated uh, very shortly that made it a crime uh, punishable with, I think it's $10,000 fine and or 10 years in prison to release any information at air base level on UFOs. And as a result of that, in a sequence of, of steady downgrading, uh, the uh, whole problem has uh, been essentially lost from scientific sight in the U.S., and nothing resembling any scientific investigation has been going on in the past uh, 15 years. Has this been typical of the attitude of most world governments? As nearly as I can uh, uh, tell, yes. Uh, there seems to be quite surprising similarity between the official Russian, British, Australian, Canadian, American, French, Ru uh, Italian uh, pronouncements. They all seem to uh, take the view that there's nothing to it, uh, that there's a lot of nonsense, that people see things, uh, and uh, that uh, it is not a real scientific problem at all. And I most heartily disagree with that. Uh, you have been as far as the United Nations with this problem. Yes, uh, about uh, two, three weeks ago, on the 7th of this month, of June, nearly a month ago now, uh, I uh, spoke to the Outer Space Affairs Group in the United Nations, urging uh, immediate uh, UN action on this problem. It seems to me that uh, uh, the UN is one of the best places to tackle the uh, international, the global aspects of the UFO problem, and all evidence now points to its being a truly global phenomenon. Uh, Utant made a statement at the time. I didn't get to see Utant. That was a busy day, June 7th. Uh, in fact, I had a date to see him at 4 o'clock, and if there was any one hour that was the peak of the Mideast crisis, 4 o'clock was it. So I unfortunately didn't get to see Utant. Uh, but uh, quite recently, a few days ago, I, I got a wire from a phone call from San Francisco uh, pointing out that uh, he had made a statement uh, to Drew Pearson, an American columnist, that um, aside from the Vietnamese War, the UFO problem is the greatest uh, international problem. And I sent him a wire uh, strongly endorsing his position but disagreeing with him to the extent of saying that I believe it's the most important international problem. Why? We 
we have in, in, in the UFO problem a, a very strange situation here for 20 years plus. Uh, essentially similar phenomena have been reported all over the world, large numbers in the U.S., officialdom ignoring them, Air Forces ignoring them, and yet apparently a steady increase in the numbers of reliable reports from people in all walks of life seeing these objects that are not products of our technology, that are not meteorological astronomical phenomena, hovering at low altitude, increasing numbers in urban areas, and collectively we don't know what's going on. That's an extremely unwise situation no matter how you view it. We do not know what is involved in this problem. There are no strong indications of anything resembling hostility. I see some faint indications of hazard and danger. But in general, to, to have this possibility that the world is under something resembling reconnaissance, possibly from some extraterrestrial source, and to go on about our petty ways collectively doesn't seem to me to be a wise situation. So I'm trying to get scientists and uh, governmental uh, uh, agencies to take a look at this at a, at a, at a highly uh, uh, accelerated pace. Professor McDonald, thank you very much.